Nearly 20% of office spaces are currently empty across the United States. This is higher than the vacancy rate during the 2008 global financial crisis, and it's worse in places like San Francisco and downtown Los Angeles, where more than a quarter of offices are empty. Rising interest rates, falling prices, and the trend of hybrid working in the wake of the pandemic reduce demand for office space, straining the commercial property market, and these troubles have only gotten worse as the recent bank failures raised fears about other regional banks that account for the bulk of commercial real estate loans running into trouble. Economic concerns and the regional banking crisis have led US banks to tighten their lending standards for all categories of commercial real estate loans, according to the latest Senior Loan Officer Survey published by the Federal Reserve. A majority of US banks said they tightened credit standards for loans secured by non-residential properties in the first quarter, while none said that they eased standards. Some lenders are even requiring personal guarantees from property owners in which borrowers pledge their personal assets to secure a mortgage. The extent to which these more restrictive lending practices prevent existing borrowers from refinancing commercial real estate loans still remains to be seen. If companies continue to give up their leases, and if demand for office space remains as slow as it has been, office landlords will struggle to collect enough rent to keep up with mortgage payments to pay off commercial loans. A lot of these loans are coming due in the next year, and many building owners need to refinance their debts at a time when low occupancy has eroded building values, interest rates have gone up, and banks have become significantly more reluctant to lend. This is not just an issue in the United States. While workers in Europe and the UK have been quicker to return to the office than in the US, vacant office space in the UK is still at its highest level in nine years. The amount of empty office space having climbed steadily since the start of the pandemic in March 2020. Swedish office landlord Castellum had to issue additional shares and has divested some of its properties to reduce its loan-to-value ratio from 44% to 38%. SBB, one of Sweden's biggest landlords, abandoned an equity capital raise, cancelled its dividend, and is now selling off assets to reduce its loan-to-value ratio from 47%. German residential landlords are expected to make their own cash calls in the near future. Earlier this month in the UK, St. James's Place Property Fund sold 141 Wardour Street, an ageing Art Deco block in London, Soho, for £39 million, which is 30% below what they paid to buy the property back in 2018. British Land, one of the UK's largest landlords, announced on Wednesday that property values had fallen 12.3% in the first quarter of 2023. Valuations for offices and factories have fallen almost as much over the last year as the 20-month price decline that began in September 2007. So overall, things are not great for landlords. Before we dig into the implications for real estate investors, banks and governments, let me tell you quickly about today's video sponsor, Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. Its intuitive lessons help you learn a language through real-life conversations. I'm taking a trip to Spain this summer and have been using Babbel to learn enough Spanish to get by. Aprendo Español. The app is intuitive and you quickly learn through real-life conversations. Learning a new language can be great for your career and social life, but it can take a lot of time. Babbel designed lessons to be just 10 minutes long, and you should be able to have basic conversations after just three weeks. The lessons are designed by real language teachers and prepare you for practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. Spring is a time to refocus, clear out the cobwebs, and make moves to become your best self. If learning a new language has always been a goal, now's the perfect time to make it into 
reality. Get 60% off on your subscription with a 20-day money-back guarantee by clicking on the link in the description below. Let me know in the comments section what language you'd like to learn and wish me luck with my Spanish. KKR is suing Twitter for unpaid rent, as Elon Musk has reportedly stopped paying office rent in California, Boston and London since he bought Twitter last year. This is likely a negotiation tactic for lower rent, but legal experts argue that it's unlikely to work and will cost Twitter more in the long run than a good faith negotiation would. Now, while things are not going well for commercial real estate investors, increased defaults and foreclosures could cause problems for banks that make commercial real estate loans too. The majority of the $1.2 trillion in US office space debt is owed to regional banks who have been more aggressive in this style of lending than large, too big to fail banks have been due to the lower regulation that they have faced since the credit crunch. If office landlords can't make their debt payments, these banks would end up owning the commercial properties and would need to sell them, which would be difficult in such an environment. The problems in commercial real estate have drawn the attention of the Federal Reserve, who published a report last week saying that they've increased monitoring of the performance of commercial real estate loans and expanded examination procedures for banks with significant commercial real estate concentration risk. When trying to understand the extent of the problem, it's becoming more and more difficult to even calculate the actual value of office buildings in the current market environment. Investors are looking at things like office badge swipes and cell phone usage in business districts to get a better understanding of how much office buildings are being used and what the demand for office space will be going forward. Academics Arun Ramani and Nicholas Bloom wrote a paper last year called The Donut Effect that used data from the US Postal Service and Zillow to understand the migration patterns and changes that have been happening in real estate markets in American cities. They found that in large US cities, real estate demand shifted from central business districts to lower density suburbs and exurbs, which gave them their paper title, The Donut Effect, which reflects the hollowing out of city centers and the growth of suburban outer rings, which appears to be happening. They found sizable donuts in large cities, smaller donuts in mid-sized cities, and no real changes in small cities on average. Interestingly, the opposite appears to be happening in the United Kingdom, where in London's West End, vacancy rates are as low as 3%, with even less space being available in high-end modern buildings. Further out-of-town locations and older buildings, on the other hand, are struggling. And this may relate to the public transportation system in the UK and how it differs between European cities and American cities. The rising office vacancies in big American cities are already changing the ecosystems of downtown city centres. Stores, restaurants, dry cleaners and convenience stores that depend on heavy five-day-a-week foot traffic are struggling to survive. For public transportation systems in donut effect cities, fewer commuters are leading to budget deficits and massive projected shortfalls. For local governments, high office vacancies will mean a drop in property tax revenues, which will burn a hole in city finances. So it's not just real estate investors that are taking a hit. So should we expect to see financial contagion, where the problems in commercial real estate lead to problems at banks, which then lead to another credit crunch? Well, maybe not, according to Barclays. The economics team at Barclays argued in a note last month that the worst fears of economic contagion from a collapse in office property valuations might be overdone. They point out that office real estate, where the problems are most concentrated, makes up around 25% of the US commercial real estate market. So the problem for banks is maybe not as big as many people think. 
They additionally highlight that office loans and office leases are long-term contracts. So there's a long chain of events that has to occur before the popularity of working from home causes widespread default on office loans that then hits banks. The team at Barclays point out that office availability, a statistic that measures how much space is vacant combined with how much space will open up in coming months, hasn't climbed too dramatically. This is partially because there was a slowdown in the construction of new office buildings once the pandemic began. Looking at this statistic, things don't look as bad as they look when just considering vacancies. The Barclays note points out that office landlords run into problems when a large percentage of their leases roll over and the tenants don't renew, or when an office loan is maturing and is either not being extended by the lender or is being extended at a much higher interest rate. The worst situation is when both happen at once. A drop in property prices, while bad for landlords and quite worrying for lenders, isn't really enough to spark a loan default. Commercial real estate borrowers will usually hold on to a property that continues to bring in enough rent to cover the loan payments, even if the property value has declined significantly. This makes sense as there's upside optionality. Even if all equity is eroded, as long as the cash flow is positive or break even, the landlord will hang on with the hope that there's a recovery on the way. Finally, and most importantly, Barclays point out that if we're going to worry about a return of the global financial crisis, we have to keep in mind that since the financial crisis, banks have much more capital, leverage is much lower, and policymakers are acutely aware of not allowing counterparty risk to go unreined. They say that the potential losses just aren't large enough to make a dent in aggregate bank capital. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's sidekick, warned last month of a brewing storm in the US commercial property market, with American banks full of what he said were bad loans as property prices fall. It's not nearly as bad as it was in 2008, Munger said in an interview, but trouble happens to banking just like trouble happens everywhere else. In the good times, they get into bad habits. When bad times come, they lose too much. Bank of America's monthly fund manager survey shows that overall fund managers have already cut their allocations to commercial real estate. Their allocations to the sector are at the lowest level since the 2008 financial crisis. Almost half of the fund managers in the survey said that they viewed commercial real estate as the most likely cause of a systemic event compared with just 8% who viewed a downgrade of US debt due to the dispute in Washington over the debt ceiling as the main risk. Interestingly, the same survey in April of last year showed that fund managers had reached their highest allocations to commercial real estate in 16 years at that point, showing how quickly sentiment towards the sector changed when interest rates started going up. If you find this topic interesting, you should watch this video next on the Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust, which has been limiting investor withdrawals for six straight months now. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Babbel, by clicking on the link in the description below. Have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye.